What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either fix them or build them, depending on how they rank. Now, today we are finishing up talking about the Light Domain Cleric, where we set everything on fire and heal everything that isn't quite on fire yet, um, and... That's uh, that's kind of our MO. That's that's about it. So make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're excited to set things on fire, I think most people are. And as you can see, most people are not subscribed. So please don't be one of those people. Help spread the fire by sharing the video with your friends. And of course, click the bell so that you're notified whenever new videos are uploaded. So the Light Domain Cleric is just a fun cleric, right? It allows you to be a blaster while also being a healer, and I think that that is just a really fun dynamic. It ranked pretty well in our ranking. If you missed that video, that'll be in the iCard above right there for you to check out. Uh, make sure you watch that before you watch this video because we go into a lot more detail on what each of the specific abilities of the subclass were. Um, and today we're just gonna kind of skim over those. So make sure you check that out before you watch this video. And welcome back, glad you watched that video first. So let's go ahead and jump into today's build and see what we've got. So let's jump right in. For our race, I'm picking one that you may or may not be allowed to use at your table. Make sure to ask your DM, but uh, I'm gonna recommend the winged tiefling. Uh, being able to have resistance to fire is cool. Tieflings usually really like fire and we can fly. So I really like the ability to fly just innately, but some DMs may not allow this. So make sure to talk to your DM before taking something with a flying speed. If that doesn't work at your table, then watch to the end and I have some honorable mentions with some other options for you. Um, but that is what we are going to be using in today's build. So we're taking the winged tiefling here over some of the other types of tieflings because honestly, either the spells that you get are redundant or don't make sense at all with the character. And so they just don't really work out. But I also really wanted a tiefling because they're just fun right and so the winged tiefling made the most sense to me and i think it's a lot of fun we'll talk about other tieflings at the very end of the video as far as our stats go we are mostly normal um you'll you'll see something that's a bit of an outlier as we go down the list um but we have a 17 in our wisdom we have a 15 constitution 13 intelligence a little strange uh 12 dexterity 10 charisma and 8 strength then we are going to put our plus two into our constitution actually and our plus one into wisdom um it doesn't make a difference as far as the stat goes for the wisdom, um, but uh, having a having a 17 in Constitution is really nice. It doesn't really make a difference either way as far as as far as which one is where. Um, but I wanted to make sure that our, our wisdom is at an even number and our con is at an odd number for now. We're of course going to fix all that later, so don't worry about it. Everything is fine. As far as our equipment goes, take a shield, a rapier, and uh, just the best medium armor you can grab. Um, you know, we, we're taking a rapier here because our dexterity is a little higher than our uh, than our strength. And honestly, you probably aren't gonna be using it all that much. Just mostly focus on cantrips, especially post level eight. Basically after level eight uh, in cleric, you're just gonna put the weapon away and just always cast cantrips if, if you just need some kind of reliable damage. So. Yeah, it's not our main form of damage. Don't rely on it. It's just kind of be. It's just kind of there. So it is what it is. Um, as then we get our, our levels, right? We're gonna start with cleric as as per usual. Um, we sometimes start with different classes, but we're gonna we're just gonna start with cleric this time. Um, we're gonna keep it pretty pretty simple for the most part. Um, so we get our spell casting here at level one, and of course we talk about this every time we take a cleric. Um, and then we also get our bonus light cantrip from being uh, a light domain cleric, and of course we get warding flare, which is really really awesome as well. Um, giving us a really nice defensive feature in a time where you would imagine that we are blasting We actually have a defensive feature, which is great uh, Definitely helps us in our ability to just be a cleric, right? I love that um, So as far as cantrips go, we get the light one for free, which is fantastic um, Guidance, prestidigitation, sacred flame, sacred flame is going to be a go-to So definitely make sure to grab that um, Spare the dying and told the dead, of course, are also really really nice um, The only one that's 
a must bring is Sacred Flame, but the rest of them are, are all really good, the ones that I, I mentioned there. Um, as far as first level spells, we get Burning Hands and Fairy Fire for free, both really good spells. Um, and then, of course, we can also grab Bane, Bless, Cure Wounds, Guiding Bolt, and Healing Word, all really good options as well. At Cleric 2, we, of course, get our Channel Divinity options here, and we get Radiance of the Dawn, which is a nice little... A little attack it does okay damage it's nothing fantastic or anything to write home about um but it's all right it's okay i'd probably rather use harness divine power instead just to keep our spell slots up uh, but if you need something like this then it's there for you once once per rest for now um at cleric three we of course get our second level spells with no features we get flaming sphere and scorching ray for free Flaming Sphere is one that I would love to be better on this build, but we have so many better uses of our concentration, so really it's not that great. Uh, honestly, I probably wouldn't use Flaming Sphere here. Um, we, of course, get Aid, Continual Flame, uh, Hold Person, Lesser Restoration, Prayer of Healing, and Spiritual Weapon. I'd rather use Spiritual Weapon here because it is non-concentration, but that is up to you if you're wanting to use Bane and Bless as your concentration type of stuff to be up all the time. Um, you you know it, it's up to you next is level four so at cleric four we get an asi or a feat and just like last week's video which will be up in the icon above right there we're taking warcaster and warcaster is just so good that i really can't pass it up because we are relying so hard on concentration and our constitution while good at a 17 is not amazing and so i definitely would like to uh, to be able to boost that a little bit more as far as for the purposes of our concentration checks this is going to go a long way and i really think this is worth taking um, it definitely is more effective now that you uh, can have your shield and your weapon at the same time and still perform somatic components and that sort of thing um, it's it's good it's just a really good uh really good feat in order to take here and then at cleric five we get our destroy undead here and so now if we use our turn undead and the creature is CR one half or lower then goodbye it's gone it's destroyed uh, we also get third level spells we get daylight and fireball for free you already know that we were blitzing all the way towards fireball because it's just awesome right uh, this this gives the ability for the cleric to be able to do uh, basically uh, how did how did Markiplier do it I think he just went uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I think that uh, I, I think that that is uh, is about how he did it, right? And so that is that's what we can do as a cleric now, which is fantastic. That's normally you know relinquished to other classes, but we can do that now. Uh, Mass healing word, revivify, spirit guardians, and spirit shroud are all really nice here. Of course, watch your concentration if you're doing those. Spirit guardians and spirit shroud honestly are probably ones that I would use less often on this cleric, just because you're probably better off concentrating on some others and just staying at a distance this is not really your frontliner cleric so don't treat it that way or you will probably be disappointed um, then at cleric six we get a channel divinity bump to a second usage and improved flare as well which is also really nice as a support feature to keep damage off of you and your friends so at level seven our character goes through a bit of a uh, of a shift uh, instead of burning libraries to the ground we decide to actually go in one and, and read some of the books and, and realize that maybe we can burn things even better if we read about it first. It's a bit of a stretch, but it's okay. We're going to take a couple wizard levels here, and so I think this is going to help us in our effectiveness in just blowing things up and not necessarily blowing up our friends. Maybe your character has cast Fireball now that you have that and hit an ally, and the ally got really hurt from it, and you're, you're having second thoughts about, wow, I really messed this up. I almost killed the people I'm here to protect. How do I fix this? And so you go to the books. And I think that that is a really good role-playing moment that would allow you to get into this really, really easily. Um, but we're gonna take a couple wizard levels here. So we get our spell casting feature, of course, um, and we get arcane recovery. So we're gonna get a spell slot back. It, it, we're not gonna get a huge amount of use out of this because we're going so few levels into wizard. Um, but we do get a spell book, which is fantastic. So we can copy spells into our spell book. And this is where I wanted our question of the day to sit because Wizard is weird, the way that rules are written. Um, the wizard causes a big debate when it comes to multi-classing and rules as written versus rules as intended. 
rules as written, technically, you could copy down any level of spell as long as you have a spell slot of that level, regardless of whether it is a wizard spell slot or not. Technically in D&D there are not wizard spell slots and, and cleric spell slots, the only difference would be packed magic spell slots, but that's under an entirely different feature called packed magic. With this, technically, by, by rules as written, which I think is just an oversight in the wording, um, we could, if we ran into a third level spell scroll, we could copy that into our spell book at this point, even though we're only a first level wizard. Let me know in the comments down below how you rule this. This is rules as written, but I don't believe it's rules as intended, and I don't think it's exactly what they wanted. Um, and I'd love to know what you rule this as. Is Can the wizard just copy things in the book that of a, of a level that he or she can cast, or does it have to be something that is appropriate to the wizard levels? I'd love to know down in the comments below. I know this is a big debate in the uh, in in the greater uh, in the greater community. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Um, then, so we get our spells here um, for cantrips. Control flames is pretty neat, and it's on brand for us. Uh, do not take create bonfire. That spell is trash. Uh, it's a cantrip that requires concentration, and that is terrible. Uh, don't do that. Uh, Firebolt is, of course, a fire cantrip, even though it's not going to be as useful as Sacred Flame. Um, so take it if you want to, but Sacred Flame is probably better. Um, and then, of course, Mage Hand. Mage Hand is always a good bring. Um, then for first level spells, we're only going to have two prepared. But the thing about, about the wizard is that you can actually cast spells that have the ritual tag, even if you do not have them prepared. So I would focus a lot on having ritual spells in your book. Look, that way you can just cast those um, without necessarily having to uh, even have the spell slot for one thing um, and, and so that that's also really really nice and uh, you know if you can get stuff that's higher level than first level that's fantastic too um, but the big thing is saving our prepared slots so as far as using up your prepared slots absorb elements or shield are both really good uses um, the, I would probably only take one or the other, probably don't take both. Um, and then comprehend languages, detect magic, find familiar, identify unseen servant. All of those can be cast as a ritual. Those are really good. Um, I would definitely take those. You get six for now. We're going to take a second level of, of wizard, so we're going to have eight spells in the book. Uh, those are all really nice. So definitely consider that as well. Then at level two, we get to choose our school of magic. And this is where we become a little bit more effective in who we hit and who we do not. Um, so we're gonna go with the evocation wizard to the surprise of pretty much no one, I'm sure. But evocation gives us a really, really cool thing. So we get evocation savant, which is something that almost all wizards get, which just allows you to copy uh, spells of a certain school into your book for half the time and cost, which is good because being a wizard is really expensive. Paper and ink are very expensive, so it's nice to uh, it's nice to have that uh, that little bit of help for these kind of spells. Um, but we also get our sculpt spells, which allows us to weave our spells that are these AOE spells around the people that we don't necessarily want to hit. So fireball, that's a contender, and we can basically create a little hole in fireball to make sure that our friends do not get hit. Now, some people would argue that this is there for new players who want to just kind of recklessly throw things around. I would make the argument that this is there for experienced players too, because then you can really place this exactly where you want it in order to catch the most enemies possible without having to worry about hitting your friends. I think that it really, really helps the wizard to be that much more effective and by comparison, also now our, our uh, cleric as well. So I think this is really nice. It carries over really well. And so, yeah, that is, that is what we're doing in wizard. And then we're back out. And that's it, we're going with Cleric the rest of the way. At Cleric 7, we of course get no features, but we do get our fourth level Cleric spells, so Guardian of Faith and Wall of Fire, both really nice. Well, Guardian of Faith is okay, Wall of Fire is really good. Um, Death Ward and Freedom of Movement are some other options that you could take here. Freedom of Movement I take on this one just to help us to be able to 
move freely uh, but we do have a flight speed too that can also help so you know we have we have a couple of, of ways of doing that um, then at cleric 8 we get several things um, as far as our ASI or feet goes I'm just gonna do a plus two to wisdom and go ahead and max that out that's the most important thing on this build is maxing out our wisdom because we're gonna be relying on spells more than anything especially now that we also get potent spell casting which allows us to add said modifier to our cantrips so sacred flame just got that much more effective don't know why we wouldn't be casting that all the time just because we can um our destroy undead also goes up to a cr1 as well before we get to cleric nine there are no features here but we get fifth level spells flame strike and scrying are both nice scrying doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me for the light cleric but i guess they just ran out of spells to give it uh but we also have greater restoration mass cure wounds and raise dead to go along with that if you want them then at Cleric 10, we get Divine Intervention. Of course, if you're not familiar with any of the base Cleric features, the I-card above will be right there for you to check out where we go into a lot more detail about that. Uh, cleric 11, our Destroy and Dead, goes up to a CR2, and we get Harm, Heal, and Sunbeam. Sunbeam is going to be really nice because it also fits with our with our sculpt spell it is a line that we can that we can concentrate on um so you know if you've got a friend that is in front of or behind your uh, your your target then you can basically just kind of make it go around them which is kind of dumb but i'm okay with it right it makes us that much more effective in being able to catch as many things in the beam as possible um cleric 12 we of course get an asi or a feed here we're going to bump constitution and wisdom to 18 and 14 respectively uh, so that's going to make our concentration checks even better and our saving throw slash bonus to hit on our wizard spells which is cool you know it's not insane but it's it's something right well we'll succeed every now and then and then cleric 13 we of course get no features but we get firestorm uh resurrection and symbol firestorm is is just a fun spell that you definitely have to take on this cleric um cleric 14 destroy and dead goes up to a cr3 cleric 15 uh no features but we get sunburst definitely take that for an eighth level spell um cleric 16 we're going to boost our dexterity to 14 now the reason we're doing this is because i think our constitution is fine right our constitution is probably fine because we have warcaster and we have an 18 if you want to bump it up to 20 do that if you really need your saving throws to be better or your bonus to hit on your wizard spells and honestly this would have a lot to do with how your dm rules writing things in your book this is actually very dependent on that because if your dm allows you to write things in your book you might want to do a plus two into intelligence instead to get you to a 16 or you take you take dexterity and you now have the maximum bonus on your medium armor so there's a lot of options, right? And honestly, they're they're all three correct. Um, I'm gonna go with this because it's gonna help our AC, it's gonna help our initiative, uh, it's gonna it's gonna help several things. But I definitely can see the argument for Constitution. I definitely can see the argument for Intelligence. I definitely can see the argument for things like Tough. Uh, but I'm gonna go with uh, with Dexterity in order to get our AC and Initiative into a better spot a better spot um at cleric 17 we get corona of light so now we glow and make people very uh, very blind which is great um and then we also get our destroy and dead at cr4 and we get ninth level spells which i'm just going to recommend taking all of them because they're all great um and then cleric 18 of course our channel divinity goes to three times per rest so that is our build for today let me know what you think down in the comments below this build definitely could create some uh, some controversy as far as you know the ruling for wizard goes uh, as far as having a book and not having the uh, appropriate spell slots in relation to your wizard level um, but i think it's really really cool right if your dm allows you to copy spells of a level that you have spell slots then you're going to be doing pretty well and you know you're going to want to boost that intelligence as high as you can go if not don't worry about it then it's okay but make sure to talk to your dm of course before you play this character and how your dm would rule that for our honorable mentions of course if you cannot use the wing tiefling uh there are a couple of options of course variant human is really good because then you could have picked up the uh, you could have picked up Warcaster at level 1, so that would have been a really viable option there. Um, that way you don't have to use any of your regular ASIs for feats. You could just go straight ASIs the whole way. And you could have a 20 in both Wisdom and Constitution and have your uh, 
pretty decent intelligence and have the max for dexterity that you need, you can get a lot done with that. So definitely an option. If you want to take a different tiefling that can't fly, the bloodline of Mistopheles is pretty good. Uh, I think that you, you can get flame blade out of it, um, which, which is okay. Uh, it's concentration, so it's not the best use. Uh, there's just so many spells here that clerics just need concentration for. So it's just so hard to find a decent spell that we get that isn't concentration, but this does require concentration. Um, there are others that give you, you know, smites and smites require concentration. So that's not really all that effective either. So there's just a lot of tieflings that aren't that great, except for the winged tiefling, at least for this build, because everything's either redundant or completely off flavor, but it is what it is. Then for our feats, um, Elemental Adept is one that you could take here and, and you choose fire. This definitely would help out a lot with our fire uh, our fire damage, being able to deal, uh, deal damage with this fire spells, um, which we rely on a lot. I don't feel like the mathematical advantage is enough on this build to be able to take it but it is worth considering for sure. Um, and then for multi-classing, I almost went with the Wildfire Druid. I came really, really close because you get the little fire spirit. Now, yes, the HP would not scale all that great, but honestly, it's really not here to deal all that much damage. Its damage is tied to your proficiency bonus anyway, so your damage is not affected by how many levels of Druid you are. Um, and it can teleport with friends that's really good. So, you know, I could just as easily see Wildfire Druid being an effective strategy here. Um, so definitely consider it. Uh, it's, it's quite nice. Um, the other option would be the Wild Magic Sorcerer, because why not, right? Wild Magic Sorcerer is really, really cool. Just being able to give yourself advantage on a lot of things um, is is really really nice um, and just having those surges is really really flavorful and I think it is absolutely so fun to be able to do stuff like that so that is all for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed next week we're gonna be talking about the nature cleric as we uh, take some druid and ranger and some other things like that and throw into the cleric class how does it rank up? Well, you'll just have to stick around to find out. So if you don't miss that, make sure that you're subscribed and you've clicked the bell so you don't miss that. Make sure to leave a like on this video if you haven't already. And until next time, we will see you all later. Make sure to stay safe out there and stay healthy. Till next time, bye-bye.